Thanks for joining us today, everyone. We are going to go ahead and get started in two more minutes. Get back to you in a second. All right, good morning, everyone. I want to thank you all for coming out today to the Oracle Sales Cloud and ERP integration webinar. This webinar will be giving a brief demo of Sales Cloud, the application, and what it's like for your salesman and day-to-day -day basis. And then we will be giving a brief um, overview of what our methodology here at Excellus Solutions and what we do to integrate Sales Cloud with different ERP systems. And kind of as introductions, my name is Seth Weinert. I am the marketing manager here at Excella Solutions. And on the phone with me today, I have Ryan Brewer, who will be giving the, the Excella Solutions overview, overview and also be giving the ERP to Sales Cloud Explanation Methodology. And then Karen Thacker has been kind to join us today to be able to discuss, um, give the demo portion of Sales Cloud and uh, show the application and how it works for the sales user. And then after all of that, we will jump into a question and answer. So go ahead, as the presentation is going, you're welcome to submit questions into the chat box, and then we will address those at the end to be able to ensure that um, you are able to have your, your questions answered and are gaining the information from this webinar that you're looking for. So let's go ahead and jump on into the Excel Solutions Overview. Ryan, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Uh, thanks, Seth. Uh, just really quickly, uh, we wanted to give a, a quick overview of Excel Solutions and uh, the services that we do offer. Um, we are an Oracle Gold, Gold Partner, and we strictly work with the, uh, the CRM solutions and the, the CX solutions that Oracle provides. So when you work with us, you know that we have, um, you know, we, we specify, we specialize, and we want to be certified on all those solutions that can help you and your, um, your CX solutions so we've got our, our Sales Cloud CRM. Uh, the other thing that's kind of our claim to fame is our integrations. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, a little later. Um, but JDE, EBS, uh, PeopleSoft, uh, SAP, you know, very specific ERPs like MAS500, uh, some of the smaller uh, ERP systems we integrate into. Uh, we also do custom development. We find a lot of times that uh, during a, an implementation that we find out, or even beforehand, we'll find out that there are specific needs that you need to make your solution successful for your enterprise. And that could be something like a quoting tool, um, creating quotes from PDFs, uh, work order systems. So uh, quite a few different things that we'll customize that we can build into the CRM solution. Um, we do CRM on demand. That's one of the, the older uh, Oracle's previous um, iteration of CRM. We still uh, help people with extended support if you do have CRM on demand. And then also right now in Oracle Marketing, that kind of rounds, rounds out the, um, the CX solution. So we do understand uh, you know, how service and marketing and uh, sales all work together, and specifically how your integrations can help those three components. 
So that's just a quick overview of, uh, of Excel solutions. And if you do have any questions about uh, more specifically, uh, feel free to put those onto the chat window. Hey, thanks, Ryan. I appreciate it. We will now have uh, we will now jump into the the demonstration portion given by Corinne Thacker. Corinne, are you there? I am. I had my own phone muted too. Sorry about that. No worries. So remind me of you all. Ah, oh, here we go. Okay. Okay, we should be able to see your screen now. All right. Awesome. Let's see what this one. Here we go. Okay. So if I if I close out that little dialog box in the upper right, that's okay, right? Or is that gonna? Yes. Do you see that? Do you guys see that, or should no, I? No, we just see your slideshow right now in the presentation mode. So how do I get that little box in the upper right to go away? I don't want to quit the conference, but. There's a little sidebar that says hide main window. Hide. Okay, got it. Perfect. Thank you. No okay. problem. It's the first time I've used that, so I um, apologize. So anyway, thank you so much for taking the time to participate in this webcast to learn more about Oracle Sales Cloud and the value that it can offer you. Uh, given that we have only about 20 minutes for the demo, we're just going to be providing a very high-level overview. But if there are areas you would like to explore in more detail, we're happy to schedule something more individualized for you at a later date. Here's my contact information uh, if you have questions after, after the event. If you have seen an Oracle presentation, you may have uh, seen our Safe Harbor statement. Basically, this is just saying that what I'm going to be showing you today is generally available product. If there are questions that come up during the Q&A regarding the roadmap, um, the, the dates and future functionality you know, may be subject to change. Now, one of the beauties about Oracle Sales Cloud is that your sales reps and sales managers can access it anywhere they are, on any device, anytime that they want. Um, so, you know, it's, it, it, and then when we're, we're talking about uh, the web browser in the first piece, um, we're talking about not only the, uh, a desktop, but a laptop and a, a desktop or a tablet. So we're going to start out in the web browser, then we'll move to the smartphone, and then time permitting, I might just show you a brief snapshot of, of uh, Sales Cloud for Outlook. Um, we, that is definitely a differentiator for us. For those of you on the phone who do use Outlook, uh, this, is, um, you know, this is something that can be used in disconnected mode and can be a really useful productivity enhancer for your sales teams. So again, we're going to jump right into the software, and we're going to focus on um, uh, a sales rep that uh, in our demo environment, a demo character called Lisa Jones. So I'm going to be Lisa for today. And we're going to go through some of the um, some of the day in the life of what uh, she, you know, she goes through. So, apologies. Okay, so here we are in the main home screen, and you can have this branded with your company logo, and you can leverage if you choose this announcements area for employees to be able to, to communicate, whether it's from HR or sales management, any key announcements that you want, you know, the, uh, the users to see. Here in the, in the main area are the icons that give access to the, to the salesperson uh, to the things that they do most frequently on a day-to-day -day or, or week-by-week basis. And it's, it's meant to be very clean, crisp, easy, in and out access for those activities. So we'll just start, for example, by drilling into uh, my schedule for today. So I see that I'm, I'm, I'm prepping for a meeting that I have uh, later today on um, a data center upgrade project for a customer called Pinnacle Technologies. And then I've got the actual presentation at their, on their uh, uh, site, at, uh, at their site, and then I've got some sales training I've got to do. So I might first want to just drill directly into my customer Pinnacle Technologies to see an a overview and as well as a, a quite a bit of detail. So on this first overview page, you see the, um, you know, the phone number of my main contact and, and uh, email, as well as the company website and, and a map that shows me the location. Also, what's really nice here is that I can see in one glance all of my open, open opportunities and the revenue value for those all rolled up. I don't need to scroll through a list and add them up myself. I have that presented to me very conveniently, as well as any open leads I have with Pinnacle and how many of those are actually hot. So that's really useful for me. In this, in this middle section, I can see uh, that I've got eight 
products that they currently own from my company, as well as something called a top recommendation. And we're going to drill into this in just a moment. But I'm seeing that the sales cloud is telling me that green servers is actually the most likely product for Pinnacle to buy. And then finally, I see the, a summary of just the most recent interactions that, can, that are not just my interactions, but that are others. So Mateo is my manager, and Bob Boyle is my sales, uh, is my sales VP. So I can see that, they, that we've all been interacting with Pinnacle this week. So th let's just drill in for a second. Um, I want to be reminded of the, um, the things that they do already own from uh, my company. And so by drilling into the assets, I see that the, the product names and anything that you want to be displayed here, this is a, these pages are, are extensible, configurable. Here, um, what, what's of value to me is understanding how much of the different products, what they cost, and then when they bought them. We have the ability to show inactive assets as well, um, and I'm interested in, in the active view. To, to keep track of, of what they've got. And when they might be, you know, when things that might be up for renewal or time for an upgrade, this helps me get that complete picture. Drilling into the profile page for Pinnacle, I see a nice overview, you know, just of the, of the basic location and contact information. And to see if there is actually a, a hierarchy below their subsidiaries. I've got access to the Pinnacle as a parent, and then the different um, subs or different business units within the uh, overall Pinnacle hierarchy. I could add uh, attachments like an account plan or other maybe you know contract uh, negotiation documents. Whatever you want to, to add here, this is visible to anyone who is on the sales team. And to see who's on the sales team, I have a convenient tab over here. So with Sales Cloud. We offer really rich functionality around territory management. And this is just a glimpse of how the assignment manager within territory, the, the territory manager module is automatically assigning certain types of salespeople to this pinnacle account. So if you have a concept of, of overlay reps, um, prime reps, inside sales, all of them can, through Assignment Manager, be automatically assigned to specific accounts. In addition, you have the ability to add other team members that, that are part of the sales cycle, and those can you know, be move in and out as needed. And there's also the ability to, to make, you know, assign the appropriate level of access. Through something called role-based access control, we can ensure that the right people are, are only you know, getting access to the right um, pages and information about a particular account. I can see all of the, the contacts. This is, this is the entire Pinnacle Technology contact list. When we talk about opportunities in a moment, you'll see that, there, that, that that's generally a subset of my entire list. We just looked at assets. We're going to come back to opportunities in a minute, but I just want to show you the rest, just explain the rest of the tabs about the complete view of the customer that you have here. You can see all the leads, the relationships of your particular contacts, the, what relationships you have, recommendations. I'll, I'll just drill into this for a minute because it really is a huge differentiator for us. When you buy Sales Cloud, you get the benefit of, or of the numerous uh, acquisitions that Oracle has made over the years, one of which is Hyperion, which has uh, something called S-Base. I don't know if you, have, if you have ever heard of it. It's not an added charge. It's just incorporated into Sales Cloud. But what this offers you is something called Sales Predictor. With this recommendations tab, what, what you're seeing is this, that the sales prediction engine is recommending products to you. And you, on that front page, I mentioned that Green Servers was the top recommended product. With the sales predictor, you can, it, you're, it's taking into account past purchase history of Pinnacle, past pur purchase history of customers in, in like industries or in industries that purchase the same products as, as Pinnacle. You can um, incorporate rules, so business rules that generate the recommendation. So for example, if you're at a certain point in the life cycle of a particular asset, there could be rules that recommend when an upgrade is coming due or a new add-on would be applicable. And, and this is just an example of the ongoing um, heavy R&D investment that, that Oracle makes, and as well as in the acquisition strategy, to offer you the, uh, the most differentiated and comprehensive uh, CRM offering. Um, you have the ability to, to see notes. And, and this is important because there, when there are multiple players in the, in the account, we can all see the same you know, view of, of notes and have a place to, to jointly share information. Um, we can also see the complete history of interactions and, and tasks and appointments 
four pinnacles. Now, I, I said I wanted to drill into the, um, the opportunities because I've got that meeting uh, around data center upgrade. So we could either use the tab on the right, or if I'm on that home page, like I just showed, I can drill into opportunities. So here's my, all of my opportunities with Pinnacle. Let's look at the data center upgrade for just a minute. So similar type of look and feel with the additional tabs on, on the left. Here, let's look. I can see that um, my primary competitor here is the Whitman Group. I can see what uh, sales method and sales stage I'm in, and I can make updates accordingly. You, this is completely configurable. We just have some in our demo environment. But whatever sales method and sales stages that you have, these, they would be uh, configured to your business needs. If you have the need to identify an opportunity type, this is also a configurable list. This is really useful if you want to flag something as maybe a renewal or a replacement, or you've got some type of anniversary thing going on with, with your products or services. What I really like about this is that part of, some of my administrative work is, is reduced because if, you are, if, I, if my company sets up rules that um, force an opportunity that matches a particular forecast criteria to automatically populate my forecast, I don't have to take the time to manually enter forecast line items, which is a huge time saver for me as a salesperson. So in this case, if the wind, let's say the wind probability is 70 or greater or 80 or greater, whatever you want it to be, that, that, this opportunity could automatically appear in my forecast without any extra effort on my part. But if I wanted to override that rule, I could. So if it was less than that, I could say yes, um, to go ahead and include it. And if it is that probability that I don't want it in there, I can overwrite that. I can also do attachments. So at the, at the account level, I can have attachments. Here at the opportunity, I can have attachments. I see that I have a task. I know I've got to make some updates to this influence map. I've got a draft up here. But I can, I can, um, can make changes and add um, additional attachments as well. And of course, I can see the revenue items in my, my next appointment, which is prepping for the meeting I have today. As we said, as I said before, you have all the other information about um, the, the context and who's on the opportunity team and, and tasks and appointments, interactions, notes, um, leads, as well as something called um, conversations. So within the sales cloud, at no extra charge, we offer something called Oracle Social Network. And this is an amazing collaboration tool that allows you to collaborate not only with your sales team members and management, but also people outside of the sales organization. This is differentiated but from other uh, competitive offerings because we're offering this to your entire company to really promote true collaboration and not limit the, the – um, we don't limit it to, uh, for just people who are licensed. It's available for free. Um, to everyone in the company. It just comes with a subscription of, of your sales users. And what we're looking at here is a sort of a chronological dialogue between myself and my VP and manager where I've attached a Word document. Any type of document can be attached. And instead of embedding this in an email, and sometimes if, if, if you're like me, I sometimes have huge files that I in the past have put in email and tried to collaborate on very inefficient way to, to do that process. And so here what we have is the ability to insert annotations um, from whatever team members are included in a conversation and have this ongoing dialogue that is date and time stamped and allows people to uh, collaborate in the most effective way possible. And we go, you know, we go into more detail about that, but I just wanted to give you a glimpse of, of how, you know, how fantastic that collaboration tool can be for you. Now one other thing I did want to do was take a look and see what, is, what was going on with one of the contacts that I'm meeting today at Pinnacle named Cole Mitchell. So Cole, and I think Josh is going to be there, but I know Cole will, and I just want to see um, you know, kind of what's been going on. So if, um, you know, if, if you're in the profile area and you need to make changes about their you know, purchasing profile, how they feel about you know, your company, you can absolutely do that. You can, I can see what um, uh, opportuni other opportunities that, ha that, that I've you know, been working on with Cole. And I can see any leads, my, uh, his relationships with other people that, that I'm in contact with, um, any notes. 
and I can see, for example, that my VP and my manager, I saw on that interaction view with, um, at, the, at the pinnacle level that there was some dialogue going on with, with my manager and my VP. Here I can get more detail on what those, the notes were about that, uh, that dialogue. And then in the interactions, I can see that, yes, you know, Mateo did place a phone call, and it was the pinnacle, and so did Bob. So you know, I'm getting this complete picture of my, my contact as well. Now, speaking of contact, so if I just want to, um, so I'm going to cancel out of my, uh, my pinnacle view. So I've been all, you know, in, engrossed here in, in everything about Pinnacle. If I just wanted to take a look at all of my contacts, I can do that very easily. And I've got a uh, quick and easy search by the alphabet if I want to so search by last name. So by drilling into different letters, if I need to just, I have a partial, I only, I remember I talked with a person named Sarah at a meeting uh, yesterday, but I cannot recall her last name. I can just run a, a quick search and then find, you know, which uh, Sarah I, I'm, that might have been and her company. Um, I have the, the benefit of filter, uh, filtered lists. I can create any type of list that I want, and generally the favorite one is, is the one I like the best, so it's first in my list. But you can, through the use of just this, this star, I can add or remove people from my favorite contact list. So if I, do, if I take that off, um, you know, then Mike Smith goes away. But the benefit of, of a favorites list is that if I have a lengthy list of contacts, this is putting the ones that I'm dealing with, you know, in, at this point in time, front and center for me. And then I can build other lists as well. Let's talk for a moment about leads. So there's a concept of a lead ranking which is, is we have these easily identifiable lead ranks that tell me if, if a lead is, is cool or hot or warm. That's, that, that's, that's just saving me time, not having to drill in and find that out. It's right there visible for me. And I can sort, these, I can sort this, these lists by any of these columns. Um, if I want to, if I don't feel like scrolling through the list, I can actually do a word search and drill into a particular lead where I can see the detail about who is the contact and, again, the rank and, and deal size, make changes accordingly. I can add products. And if I wanted to get a, before contacting Aaron Riley, if I wanted to get a quick glance at what his digital activity, his digital profile is, if you have our, our marketing solution called Eloqua, we have a built-in integration here that, um, that provides a, a profile of what Aaron's activity has been over whatever period of time you specify. Here we're looking at, um, over the course of the last year, how many web visits have he made to my company's website? And drilling into any one of these green bars, I can see the actual pages that he visited in red are the email outbound marketing campaign emails that were sent to my contact, Aaron Riley. How many emails did he open in orange? What forms on my company's website did he submit? So I can see lots of information about what he's interested in. And here, I can see that his interest has started to taper off. So maybe this is a great time to reengage. And I've got this lead with him. Now, if, let's say I've done this research on, on him. Um, and by the way, we also have, you may have seen when I was in the contact page with Cole, we also have the ability to link out to, to LinkedIn and Facebook, any, any third-party data sources that you want to, to insert links to, we have the capability to do that so you can do additional research on your contacts. Um, this lead assessment is a very useful tool for a salesperson because it allows you to pick and choose uh, you know, options to uh, answers to questions uh, about your products. And, and so, you know, as you're going through and, and answering, you know, different questions um, with, the, with the prospect, the, the lead score is changing. So if, if I change in any of these, you can see it goes up and down. And you have uh, the score as well as a, a, a rating. So yeah, after my, my conversation with um, Aaron, maybe at this point I'm deciding that this is actually not only a hot lead, but it's, it's really that good that I'm going to convert it to an opportunity. And I could do that right from within this page. If it weren't such a good lead, I could reject it, and I, or I could reassign it to someone that was more appropriate or retire it. And if you're thinking about where are these leads coming from, 
it could be a variety of sources. So your, your leads can come from trade shows, from the website, things to channel in from your website. If you have Eloqua, um, our marketing tool, you can, it, they can channel leads directly into this view. It could also be just as simple as you know, business cards that you get in a meeting. Whatever it is, manually entered or filtered down from another source, they would all appear. And again, with that assignment manager that I spoke of earlier uh, related to territories, they're automatically routed to the right reps based on the territory structure. Another thing that um, is of interest to salespeople is the ability to have analytics. So this is just a small sampling of, of what a sales rep might want to view. So maybe they want to see their, you know, how they're doing against their quota or what their pipeline looks like. We have a, a pipeline chart that's like this in, in a bar chart form, or maybe you want to see it in, in the context of a, the, the funnel where you can see by sales page what your, your actuals and targets are. And we can see things like um, um, your interactions, your activities, either in chart or tabular form where you can actually drill in and see all the, the information there. So that was, that was kind of a, a flyby of a, of a lot of capabilities that you have in the, in the browser. Let's just take a look really quickly on the, the phone, on the smartphone. And, and also keep in mind, all of this that I've been showing you, I've been on my laptop, but I could, e just, I could easily have been um, on a tablet as well. So it's um, wherever you have you know, Wi-Fi access, um, you can do what we were doing. So tablets, and it's great, and the large buttons and pages are very conducive to um, usage on a tablet. So here I'm sharing my phone with you. I have an iPhone. Uh, this works on uh, Droids and even Blackberries. Now, the, the social network that I mentioned when I opened up that social conversation and showed you the document annotation, that's actually available in web, in web, in the, uh, on a browser and on your phone. And this little icon here is, is, is what um, I use. And I use this literally every day with my peers. I haven't checked all of my updates this morning because I was prepping for this meeting. But you can see I've got a lot of, of conversation updates that, that I'm going to be viewing. And I can do that on my phone or on my PC or tablet. The Sales Cloud is uh, what we're going to be looking at here in a moment. Mobile Sales, you can actually download this. If you're an iPhone user, you can get it from iTunes. Um, Droid, I'm not really sure uh, what your, how you access your apps, but you can get it. Um, look for Oracle Sales Cloud. I'm going to tap in here. And what you're presented with, if you are doing this, if you download it, you can use demo mode. I'm going to be logging in as Lisa. So I just sign in, and I'm presented with my um, my page that has uh, all of the, the things that I need you know, right in front of me most, that I use most frequently on a day-to-day -day basis, everything from my calendar. And we saw the calendar in the web browsers as well, but my calendar and any alerts and opportunities, tasks, contacts around me, customers, analytics, leads, and forecasts, so pretty much what we saw in the browser. Let's just tap for a moment into the customers. Here is a complete list of my customers. This is native iPhone swiping and tapping capabilities. I can just do a search uh, for Pinnacle as an example. We'll keep with our, our Pinnacle technology sample. Remember the hierarchy. Granted, this is using native iPhone um, cap, you know, rendering and capabilities, so it looks a little different. But we can still see that there's, you know, there's divisions within Pinnacle. And here in this view, um, if I'm driving to Pinnacle site, I have my address I can tap to, and Siri can get me there. I have these bot buttons at the bottom. Here are all my pinnacle opportunities, contacts, news feeds. This is uh, so based on the stock symbol. This is going to pull in articles about your company. So this is really nice when you're, you know, in the car waiting for your meeting or in the waiting room or whatever, trying to, you know, get get up to speed on the latest about the company. Additionally, you can see that the calendar here. So what's different here is that this is just the pinnacle events, things going on with pinnacle and not the, um, your entire calendar. So it's a nice filter for you. you are, again, with the, the leads, notes, interactions, everything that we saw before in the browser is all here. And I have the ability to make updates. So I can go into my opportunities. I can make updates to revenue items. I can change the sales stage. I can add notes. And whatever I'm doing is all synchronized back with the, uh, the sales cloud. You know, so no matter where I am, I don't know why it's doing that. Well, it's no, so no matter where I am, I'm able to keep up to date. And if I can use this 
um, you know, when I'm just stepping out of my meeting or waiting in the airport, if I can do this more in real time, I as a salesperson am more likely to leverage the tool. And it makes your user adoption so much greater. And user adoption tends to be um, an issue with CRM systems. So it, this is really promoting that user adoption. Let's see. I don't know why that opportunity was spinning, but I could, I could have gone in there and made edits. Also, I can, since this is my phone, I can call out. right? So I can, I can tap into Cole Mitchell, and I can see his phone number. I could even send him an email from my phone. I can call him from my phone. Now, I'm going to be tapping on his phone number, and it's going to pop me out of my, uh, to dial him up. Then when I end the call and go back into mobile sales, um, what's going to happen is I am prompted for a, whether, whether I want this to be logged by, by, my, by the system for me automatically as an interaction. And if I say yes, then I can either use my voice to text or ent in for the description, and enter that, or just paste in, um, you know, play, paste in a comment of whatever, you know, and then save that. So um, anyway, if you, you know, whatever you're, wherever you are on the road, and you want to um, make those updates or review information, you can do that very easily from your your phone. And just really quick, final, we'll just uh, go. I'll stop sharing here, and I'll just give you one glimpse at Outlook. Um, and we'll, and we'll wrap it up. So let me pop over into that. If you are an Outlook user, what happens is when you have Oracle Sales Cloud for Outlook, it, it looks very similar when you first come into your inbox. But any time, any email that you want to share with Sales Cloud and assign uh, customers that the system knows are in your territory, and uh, associate communi you know, email, um, email uh, with your um, opportunities or leads. You can assign related items. From that, you can drill in and see a complete view of your customer and make, um, make changes. This is not read only. This is create, read, update, delete. So we can see the complete view of the customer and drill in, sort the lists, open up opportunities, see the complete view of the opportunities, add new revenue, new items, send emails to contacts where the, the lists are automatically populated for you in the emails or make appointments. Um, so you're really leveraging the full power of, of Outlook without any training for your sales users. And, and, and letting them be in the same, you know, in a place that they're already operating very frequently. And they can access through various folders all of their contacts. They can drill into all of their customers just like we saw. They can look at the, their opportunities and leverage native um, Outlook search uh, um, uh, formatting capabilities using the group by and basically create their own reports inside of Outlook. So that was a really quick flyby on Outlook as well. Um, but in, you know, in conclusion, hopefully you were able to get a, get a perspective on how, um, you know, a kind of a day in the life of a sales rep in through ev whatever means that they want to access the tool at any time during their day. So I'll turn it over, back over to you, Seth. Thank you, Trent. really appreciate that. I'll go ahead and start sharing my my screen again. Hopefully everyone sees that now. We'll now go ahead and uh, move on into our integration methodology to between Sales Cloud and ERP systems. Um, really appreciate that demo. And like we mentioned earlier, feel free to ask any questions that you have. Go ahead and submit those in the chat box, and we will go ahead and address those in you know within a, a five-minute Q and A after the ERP portion of this webinar. Ryan, are you there? Yes, can you hear me? Yes. Great. I just want to say thanks again to uh, Corinne. That was a great demo. Um, I know it was really fast, but there's a lot of information there. Uh, and like she said, if you guys are interested, if we have enough interest of uh, having a full demo with Corinne, we'd love to get her back on and just have her you know, take a full hour and give a, a full demo of uh, Sales Cloud. She does a great job. And there's, there's a lot more to Sales Cloud, and uh, you know, we can be a little bit more specific. So if there is some more interest in uh, getting a, a full demo of just Sales Cloud, uh, be sure to let Seth or myself know, and we'll schedule that with Corinne. So thanks again, Corinne. So 
so really quickly, kind of the purpose of this, uh, this webinar um, is to, to show what's possible with, uh, with integrations between ERP systems and Sales Cloud. Um, the slide we've got up right now is specific to JDE. Uh, we've dealt a lot with JDE, and so it's kind of what we've named our methodology. We call it the JDE F55 table methodology. But really what it is is just a temp table methodology. Um, it works regardless of whether it's JDE, um, EBS, PeopleSoft, SAP, or, or really anything that you want to integrate into. This methodology really takes out the limitations um, and really allows you to decide what you want to integrate. So, so typically, whether it's JDE, EBS, or PeopleSoft, those are the, the main ERP systems, and I'm just going to say ERP from now on. Um, you know, you've got all your tables inside of your ERP system. They could be your customer master, you've got your, your item catalogs, you've got your sales order history, you know, all these different um, pieces of data. It could, could be anything from point of sale data to opportunities. Whatever you have is residing inside of your ERP system. Um, the traditional way of trying to integrate was, was to go through those kind of pre-built integrations that come with each one of those ERP systems. Now, now that's great. The only problem is, is, is it really boxes you into what you can and can't do. So we've kind of gone around that, and what we do is we have you create um, inside of your ERP system temp tables. Again, JDE calls those F55, uh, EBS, they're called uh, staging tables. Whatever those tables are, um, we then have you guys create the data uh, model that brings that data from your actual uh, ERP tables into these temp tables, and that's kind of represented here on the blue is what's inside of your ERP system, and then that data is brought into the temp tables in green. Um, and you can see, for instance, the, the sales order header and the sales order details, that data is brought together and to make a complete uh, sales order history inside of the, the green table. And that really could come from anything. If you needed to combine data from a data warehouse, uh, your ERP system, and maybe some other external data, we bring that into those uh, tables there. Now this is where we take ourselves, and from that point on is we know how to connect that through web services into Sales Cloud. Uh, so from that point on, you'll see uh, Oracle Sales Cloud is the, the red tables, and we actually will build a, a Java application that will reside on your server, so it's, it's got direct access to those temp tables, and one of the great things about this methodology is we're not touching your actual tables. So, you know, during testing, during production, if there's any issues, we're not touching your actual uh, production data, and so we're not going to be messing anything else up. Um, and it allows us to, to actively be testing and making sure that data is always correct. We can also compare it against uh, data inside of your um, ERP system. So that Java application is, is cross-platform. It allows us, you know, whether it's Unix, Linux, uh, Windows, it could be on AS400, whatever your back-end system is, we can deploy that uh, Java program there. Uh, from that point, that Java program can be on a, a schedule, you know, whether it needs to be real-time or near real-time, or um, it could be a daily or a weekly um, update. It, it just depends. We'll just we'll talk with you and we'll determine what's going to be the right amount of uh, the time schedule for that data to be transferred from those temp tables into uh, CRM. Now you'll notice we've got the dotted line at the bottom uh, surrounding those pieces down. Now we can do uh, bi-directional or one way going into uh, CRM cloud and also coming out of CRM cloud. So depending on what your needs are, if you have some data, for instance, um, you know, creating a sales order, we've created uh, standalone applications uh, built into uh, Cloud CRM that actually allows your users to create a full sales order inside of CRM, never having to go into their ERP system. They can quote from there. They can then send a PDF to the customer, and then the customer will say, yes, I, I need to create this order. All they have to do is they click a button that then sends it into those temp tables and then eventually gets into your full uh, ERP system, hits your business functions, and uh, a sales order is created, and then we would pull that sales order um, data back into the opportunity and then just post that there that says, well, here's your, see your sales order, and here's the actual ERP sales order number, and now you can see that inside of your CRM system and never having to go into JD or into your ERP system. 
And that really is kind of our, our methodology. Um, we found it to be a, a great methodology. It's real simple. Um, what it does is it allows us to be experts in what we do, and that's bringing that data into uh, CRM. And what it allows is for you guys to, to maintain the expertise of your developers that are on staff on your side. Now, we do run into uh, companies that may not have uh, an ERP developer on staff, or maybe you, have a, you, know, you don't have the resources available at this given time. Uh, we do subcontract out, and we've got some great uh, ERP developers for all the major ERP. So if, if you do, do need an extra resource to do those pieces, we, we'd be more than happy to uh, subcontract those out for you. But in most cases, you know, your, your developers that you have know your system better than anybody else out there, and uh, they'll be able to create those, uh, those programs, those functions to get us the data in those green tables, and then we'll take it from that point on. Um, Go ahead and go to the next slide. Uh, and here are just some, some real basic, um, you know, our, our common ERP uh, integrations, you know, address book, uh, sales order history, your product master, um, price scheduling, credit and financial information. You know, we bring this off, you know, over very often. Um, it's great for, you know, if you've got a credit department or even sometimes at a, a, a sales user, you want to know what their their 30, 60, 90 um, is in their, their credit information. So we can bring over all of their individual financial information. If we need to bring over uh, inventory, uh, you know, sp more specific than just what products you have, but what inventory is available. Um, and then, you know, things that we'll integrate back from CRM to ERP is sales orders and customer master. Uh, depending on your situation, you know, we want to sit down with you and we want to understand how you currently use your systems and how you want to use them in the, in the future. So we're going to determine what is the, the best set of integrations that would work for you. And again, our integrations really are unlimited. You know, if you have POS data inside of your system, if you've got, you know, whatever data you have inside of your ERP system, we can bring that over and display that inside of um, CRM. And then the great thing is, is we can combine it together with that other CRM data, and then we can report on that. You know, that's a, a great thing about uh, cloud CRM is it, it has the Oracle OBIE uh, reporting engine behind the scenes, and so we can create, you know, some great reports uh, that you'll then be able to visualize all that data inside of your ERP, inside of your CRM system, and bring that together. So I, that's a, a real quick overview of, um, you know, what we do as far as our, our integration model, um, what we can uh, do and really again it really is kind of unlimited to what uh, you've got inside of your system and it's just a, a matter of identifying what would be the right place you know where would we want to keep the master of data and how we're going to uh, bring that over and where we'd want to view that um, it is a simple methodology we found it to be very successful you know we've done hundreds of implementations and uh, you know many of our implementations will have 10 plus uh, integration points and a lot of times they, they'll be integrating into a ERP system, a third-party, um, you know, very specialized system, and bringing all that data together is really important for your, um, for your enterprise. Um, the other great things about this methodology is it doesn't get um, slammed whenever you do your, your upgrades. If you're doing a, a major release or minor release or tools releases, um, our pieces don't break. You know, it, it you know, it's separate from everything that's else out there. As long as that data is being presented to those green tables, those temp tables, um, we don't have to make any changes, and it's really easy to test. You know, we've gone through major releases of ERP upgrades, and it's very minimal testing. You know, what they found out is, yep, everything's working like it's expected, and we can just keep going from that point on. Um, and for, for the future, we deploy this. We also give you the code. So, you know, we can actually teach your guys how to do the, the different pieces of the integration. And if you guys want to, you know, add a field in or you're going to change fields, it's fairly easy to modify the integration. So then you can then bring in additional data down the road for those individual integrations. Um, so with that, we've got about 13 minutes, it looks like, uh, left. I'd like to open it up now for, uh, for questions, and you, you can have questions on the ERP side or on the, uh, the demo that you saw from Corinne. Uh, so I'll turn the time back over to Seth to, uh, to ask any questions that you've received. 
Hey, thanks, Ryan. I appreciate that. And I appreciate all of you for, for coming out today to view this, this webinar. Here is, here's a list of contacts. Feel free, you know, if you have to head to another meeting, we understand. Feel free to go ahead and email us with any questions that you have. And like Ryan said, um, if you would like to see more on SalesCloud and what it can do, we would love to bring Kryn back on and be able to uh, give you a personal demo more specifically applied to your business model and how your company works throughout the sales team. But uh, we will go ahead and hang on for a few more minutes to answer any questions that pop up in the chat screen. And once again, I just want to thank all of you for coming and, and also thank you, Kryn, for coming out today and, and helping us on this webinar. Thanks. Ryan, can you go ahead and answer a question about timelines? Yes. Um, so one of the, the pieces that we, we work with, um, you know, typically an integration point and a, an integration set is going to take, you know, between one to two months depending on how many um, integrations. We work very closely with uh, your developers. And as long as they have the time, uh, you know, we can do those pretty quickly. It more de determines on, on how many integration points that you want to do. but. You know, a typical one integration point from your side uh, typically will take about 40 to 40 to 80 hours of uh, of time on on your side to get the uh, the code developed that we need to bring over that data. Thank you. All right, that is all the questions that we have. Like I said, feel free to email us with any other questions that you have, and uh, thank you for coming out today.